Hello and welcome to my triangle strategy Milo guide. So Milo is a unit that you can unlock when you go the Hyzant route. Uh, she's essentially an assassin, so let's actually just pull her up in the roster. Uh, she can ask to join your house near the end game, but you can play her the entire playthrough on New Game Plus from the beginning. So I'm going to be assuming you're playing either near the end game on hard mode or on New Game Plus, and I'm going to go over... Uh, her abilities. I forgot to go over accessories for the previous two videos, for the previous two characters. So for, um, for Huette, for the accessories I put on her, uh, you can run damage, but accuracy and movement is pretty good. Movement helps her find high ground easily. Uh, it helps her kite, so I think movement, like Bangle, is really good on her. Accuracy is good. You could do strength as well. And then for um, Gila, she's like way over here. There she is. Okay, she's right here. Um, I have, uh, like, defensive items on her. So defense bracelet, HP bracelet, just to increase her tanking. Uh, you can run things that increase her magic. That should increase her healing. Uh, but her tanking is good. Uh, you can see that she has better magic defense than physical defense. And most of the things that will probably hit her will be physical, assuming you position her well. So, all right, so now that I've covered that, let's jump into Milo. Okay, so she is very dodgy. Like, if you look at her evasion... Her and Anna have some of the best evasion in the game. Uh, evasion prevents you from getting hit. So, like, if you look at other units, like, their evasion is not nearly as good. Uh, Piccoletta has really good evasion as well. Uh, but evasion reduces enemy accuracy, so they, they have a less... They have, they're less likely to hit you. She also has a passive that increases invasion. Or in, in, invasion, evasion. Okay, so for accessories, I have evasion uh, bracelet on her, which... First of all, gives her immunity to temptation, which is nice, and it increases her evasion by 5. And then a strength bracelet, plus, plus 3 strength, grants immunity to instant death. Um, the grants immunity to instant death is circumstantial. There's, like, very few cases where this will happen. Uh, but the the more the increase in damage and the increase in invasion... In, in, I keep calling it invasion. Invasion. Evasion are quite good. Okay, so, abilities. Green Mist... Deals non-elemental damage to a single enemy and has a chance to poison them for three turns. So, this is a pretty good ability. It does good damage. Uh, it does more damage than her basic attack and it puts poison at a pretty high success rate. So, she can poison things very effectively. And I'm going to go over some of her, like, like basic uh, tactics. Because she's, kind of, she's a lot like Anna, but instead of being more damage-oriented and stealthy... She has better mobility and better like utility. So she's a she's like a like a flanker assassin type that has better utility and better mobility than Anna, but less damage. So that's like the trade off. Uh, you have Blue Knight, lowers an enemy's strength and magic uh, for three turns. Steal one TP. So this is good against bosses. If you run Milo. And Julio, they can both siphon t TP off of things or reduce TP. So like, when an enemy boss comes and attacks you, being able to remove TP from it prevents it from using insane abilities that have like massive area of effects that can like you know wipe out multiple units in a single ability. So this is good, uh, but it doesn't deal damage, and it's mostly just a utility that you sometimes use. Uh, she has instinct, increases your evasion when enemies are nearby. So as long as she's near an enemy, she has even higher evasion. So she has she's like a dodge tank in this way. Uh, she also has moon jump. This is this skill is extremely important in her kit. So what this does is it let, it lets you leap, for, like it lets you leap a distance, and you can also leap in verticality. So she can leap up to things, and then she can do another thing after that. So she can use moon jump, and then she can move and attack, or attack and move. So one thing you can do. With her is leap from high ground and then hit some enemy with an attack and then run away and and kite so that only one enemy can hit you or, or kite to safety. So uh, movement bangle would be good on her as well. Um, so maybe I should try switching that, but I think I'll get another one in the second playthrough. So I'll probably throw it on her. But you can moon jump and then go behind something and green mist it or use heart stealer. So heart stealer, chance to tempt an enemy for two turns. So, Tempt is a crowd control ability that makes an enemy an ally for two turns. When they get hit, there's a chance it ends. Uh, the chance seems to be 
roughly 30 to 40 percent that it ends because enemies can get hit a few times it might be 50 50 uh, but generally using heart stealer on an isolated enemy or like an enemy archer that is on high ground is extremely useful because you just get an archer for two turns that'll just shoot things for you so and it also prevents it from shooting her so she can so tempting can be circumstantially really good uh, she also has evade detection this lets her run right through enemies she's as far as i know the only unit that can do this um, let me just double check. Yeah, she doesn't have that. Um, so, she can just straight, like, enemies do not act as a barrier, she can walk through them. So this is extremely useful, especially when you consider you can moon jump through them and then run even further. Uh, she also has Stardust. Uh, this paralyzes all enemies adjacent to you, uh, with a decent chance, like, roughly 60 to 70 percent. Um, so you can paralyze a bunch of things. Um, you can get up to four enemies, you could star jump in the middle, or sorry, moon jump in the middle of a, a group of enemies if they're all near each other. And if she's like surrounded by them, she can star dust and they'll probably paralyze most of them. Um, it's decent. You you could basically use it to paralyze like two, well, your average case, you'll be paralyzing one or two enemies. So she has a lot of utility, a lot of CC. And then she has this ability, uh, Power of Love, which uses four TP, which is not a trivial, a trivial amount of TP. It's quite a lot. Uh, what it does is it's essentially a higher success rate heart stealer. Uh, from what I've observed, it has like 100% success against non-boss enemies. And it hits in a plus pattern. So it hits, uh, you know, from the middle it hits like on either side and then above and below. So it, hit, it can hit up to five enemies total. If five enemies are grouped together, you can tempt all of them. It has a decent range. You can see here it has a range of one to four. So it is quite good. So basically she can tempt things at range. So if you're on like high ground and they can't hit you anyways, uh, if you had five TP, uh, you could do something like moon jump and then run to like approach a group of enemies and then power of love them. And if there's other enemies, they'll all just like start fighting each other. So it's pretty crazy. Um, they won't attack the other tempted ones, but they'll attack other enemies. So depending on the turn order, you could get a lot of free damage just from doing this uh, on both the enemies uh, that you tempted and the ones that you didn't because they'll attack the ones that aren't tempted. So she has a lot of crowd control um, She has she's basically like an, an assassin with crowd control. She doesn't have like spike damage But green mist is good and the fact that you can moon jump green mist and then run away is decent as well Or even just moon jump into a heart stealer um, Like moon jump into heart stealer against isolated enemies is very strong because then you have uh, another thing for enemies to attack and they tend to attack the other enemies instead of Milo because of her high evasion Okay, so let's look at her upgrades. This is the first character. I got all the upgrades on and, and like I'm, I've been grinding out some things to get materials too. It takes forever to get some of these superior materials So she is my first maxed out character um, So let's go over all of her abilities so tier one uh, plus five damage uh, she's gonna be hitting things constantly you want this um, Evasion up, you want this. You want her to get, be as dodgy as possible. Uh, increased physical defense and magic defense, you want this, just in case she does get hit. You want her as tanky as she can be. Uh, plus one isn't a huge difference, but it's cheap and easy to get these tier ones, so you might as well. Speed up, huge. Having increased speed means you're going to be going more often and before other enemies, so that's good. Uh, weapon damage up again, just pl plus five more damage. You definitely want to use this. Damage is good. Uh, evasion up. This is huge. Plus two evasion is, is a massive thing. So three total. Definitely want it. Um, this. So this is an either or. Once you unlock one, you get both. And you can you can you can swap them out depending on how you want to play, or what the circumstances uh, call for. So in this case, I use green mist duration plus one. So it becomes a four turn poison. So the big upside of Milo is her hit and run tactics. Uh, and also note, you can you can tempt poisoned enemies, and the poison, as far as I can tell, doesn't break the temptation, and it also doesn't break sleep. So kind of like how Anna can uh, poison something and then slumber stab um, Milo, you know, during her next turn, because she can't act twice like Anna, she can tempt an enemy that's poisoned. Uh, so that's quite useful. And then alternately, uh, you can run Blue Knight Duration, which just increases the duration of the debuff of the minus strength and magic on the enemy. So uh, I would say the poison's um, like almost certainly better than the debuff. The debuff isn't bad, but there's but like poison kills things. So I, I have a hard time finding value 
<laughs> in this. Uh, but okay, let's continue. So speed, this is really good. More speed is good. More more actions per game. Uh, okay, this is very useful. Increases success rate of Heart Stealer. So Heart Stealer on average is like I don't know, fifty to sixty percent accuracy, and then with this, it puts it up to like eighty to eighty-eight percent, which is much more reliable. So she can go up to isolated enemies, or depending on the turn order. She can tempt an enemy who's about to act, and then they once they go, they'll like go run off and smack another enemy. And, and also, they'll set up, they'll try, like, when you get an enemy on your team, they'll try to set up follow-up attacks. So, if an allied unit is standing on the opposite side of something, they'll position themselves to do follow-up attacks, and they can also trigger follow-up attacks. So, if you tempt something, and then you have, like, Anna sneak up behind another enemy and backstab them twice, the tempted enemy will actually trigger follow-up attacks and hit and hit that uh, that unit as well. So not only will they be on your team, but you can make use of them tactically, which is cool. Uh, Power of Love, this you need this to unlock it. It's a pretty good ability, but it uses a lot of TP, so circumstantially it could be good to to uh, tempt a bunch of things at range, which at, at, at best gets some enemies dealt a lot of damage, the tempted enemies and the other enemies, and at worst just slows the enemy team down because it just wastes their time a bit and they kind of like hit each other if you like, they waste basically a few of their turns each at minimum, so it's a pretty good ability. All right, so let's actually run her in a mock-up battle just to kind of show some of the tactics. I'll try to, I might do like a low level one just to like go over the tactics, so maybe something like this, like with like few, it's level four, but I just want to like go over the positioning and the tactics and stuff like that. And I'll do like, I don't know, four units. Cause I spend, I think I spend too much time with all these other units. So let's do unit placement. Okay. So let's just do like, let's just do this. Just a healer. Okay. Let's put the healer in the corner. These probably, these shouldn't even be able to kill me or deal that much damage, so I can just kind of show her abilities. Or maybe I want Julio also. I'll grab Julio so he can, he can give her TP so I can show every ability off. Okay, cool. That's fine. They're level four, so that's whatever. Should be fine. I think in the context of an actual battle, it's useful to see, but I think that's going to be more of like an advanced tactics thing where I go over like specific tactics. So, okay. So depending on the layout of the map, how many enemies are nearby, and a bunch of other factors, Milo is either going to be doing one of two things. Either she's going to be crowd controlling enemies that are attacking your main forces, and also assisting in damage and, and putting debuffs on things and poisoning them. Or she's going to be traveling with, like, um, Anna and probably Huet, like, flanking. So, like, you can have, like, a flank squad. Like, Huet can blind things. Anna can slumber stab. Milo can tempt. You have this, like, CC. The damage output, the poison. Uh, they can, like, go behind the enemy lines and start picking off their mages and stuff like that. Uh, in this case, this is just a head-to-head -head battle, so obviously she would just jump in and start fighting things. Um, but you'd want to, you'd still want to be careful. You'd still want to make sure she's not, like, completely vulnerable. Um, but, okay, so what I'll do is actually just, like, wait a turn. Okay, let's see. This guy's coming forward. They're level 4, so they can't kill us. So, alright, let's give her some TP. Just a moment of truth here. I'll just show the one. I'll haste her as well. I'll show the one ability. The tempt, the AoE tempt, if I can get some enemies next to each other. Okay, so... So if we run up... So here's the power of love's range. So it's like a square. You can see here the success rate is 100. So I'll tempt both of these just to show what happens. Alright, then we'll pass. Alright, so this guy... So he'll just attack. So he attacks him, and it ended his thing. So in this case, uh, attempting two things caused an enemy to get hit and another enemy to attack another enemy. Now obviously, it wasn't the best result because these are like low level, they don't deal that much damage, and the one that attacked was like this guy. But if, you, if I check the turn order, or like if I tempted this, this would be big value here, like getting three, three mages, and they all go one, way, one right after each other, they would 
deal fat damage to each other. Um, so we'll see if we can get that going. We should be able to, actually, by doing this. <laughs> I, lo I love Julio. He's so crazy. He can do this crazy nonsense. All right. All right. He doesn't move. Oh, no, he does move. Okay, never mind. All right, so... I guess she'll just heal her, even though she took one damage. Okay. So you don't want her around this many enemies. Like, you generally want her to be on a flank, or to be, like, fighting with your forces, or with, a, like, a small group of flankers. Uh, so, like, Roland, you know, Hewitt, Anna, these are good units to flank with. Uh, okay, so let's go over these other abilities. So... You can kind of see the damage difference in some of these. Uh, in, in a lot of cases, Green Mist does more damage because it's non-elemental. It's like untyped. I believe it's like untyped damage. So it just like ignores defenses in some respects. But it always hits harder than Phoenix Fan. Uh, and then Blue Knight, you can see here, you steal a TP. Which can be useful in some situations. And then Heart Stealer. Uh, it has a higher success rate against these because they're still low level. But generally it's like around 80. And then her... Her big power of love is like almost always 100 or very high 90s. So even though right now they're both 100 because these enemies are low, this the power of love is more consistent, hits more things. Heart Stealer just hits a single target. All right, and then Stardust. You can see here, even though these are low level, the paralysis chance is quite low and it hits everything around here. So let's just use that just for the hell of it. Uh, so I ended up paralyzing both of these, but it's it's going to be around like 60% chance against enemies your level. So it's not the best thing, but as you can see here, paralyzing multiple enemies for two turns is decent. It just completely prevents them from doing anything. Alright, I'm gonna start killing some of these just to get them out of the turn order. Okay, and then I'm gonna show hit and run tactics. This is abstract, so you would have to, like, um take this information and like make use of it. So like here's like a basic combo with Milo. Moon jump is your biggest tool and is generally going to be used a lot. So for example, if she's on like a high ground or something, she can leap down. Uh, I could have left behind him too to get crits, but um, and then just like use a poison ability and then run away. And the big, the big upside of this is you can target the furthest enemy leap behind them so you're even farther away and then run out of range and then put poison on something for free and then get out safely and then even if what like you if you do it right only one enemy like zero to one enemies will be able to hit you and even if one can hit you her evasion tanking and if, assuming she's at full health will prevent her from getting killed and it'll also be a poisoned enemy and then you can tempt it the next turn assuming she has the tp for it so pretty pretty decent stuff but that's like the overall thing the overall use case, like she leaps in, puts poison on something, or tempts it, and then, you know, runs out. That's like her, her main strategy. Alright, we'll just finish up here. Uh, so, if you had to choose between Anna or Milo, like if you could only run one, uh, which is better? Um, it's not clear to me which is better, because they both serve different roles. One is more mobile and has better CC, and the other one... So Milo has way better crowd control than Anna. She has much. She has way less damage though. Anna can just appear behind something and just attack it twice in the back for pretty good damage, whereas Milo can leap behind something that's fo like she can run and then leap behind an enemy that's far away and backstab them with poison for good damage as well. So it really depends on like what you need. Um, so if you either want damage. You go for Anna, or if you want mobility and utility, you go for Milo. And if you run both, they're like insane together because they can, you can poison things and tempt them, and poison things and sleep with sleeping stab or slumber stab, and it's so ridiculous. So I would recommend running both of them if you like them both because they're both quite strong. If I had to rank Milo in like a tier list, I would say she's probably like A plus tier, potentially S tier, depending on how um, good, like like how 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 things go with tempt like if tempts keep getting ended prematurely then pre just like probably like a plus tier but if tempts pop off and and work out in your favor well and you like take the turn order into account uh she could easily be s tier in the right circumstances just because you could aoe tempt things and if you have like julio feeding her tp she can just keep 
completely turning the enemy army against itself. Like, you know, that's pretty insane, so... So yeah, that's my Milo guide. I would say she's a really strong unit, and you can run her, and she's quite good. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. If you like this video, leave a like and subscribe. I'm going to be making a guide for every single character in this game. Um, for hard mode and new game plus hard mode, which is a little bit harder than normal hard mode. And then if you have any information or any like thoughts, like anything I missed about this character, or maybe some tactics that you could use with Milo that I didn't go over in this video, definitely leave a comment about that. Or just if you want to voice your opinion, whatever, you know. It's a free YouTube in a way. So yeah, thanks for checking this out and I'll see you in the next one.